Hi guys. Today we're going to talk about training, practice, and competitions. Uh, and they're different and people get confused by what is what sometimes I think. Um, training is when you learn a skill under an instructor. Okay, and you can do that in various different ways. Of course, you've been taking training from me. Uh, uh, in the real world, this is a form of training. You can do training online. You can watch videos and stuff like that. Really, hands-on training, I think, is the best. Uh, you can back it up, of course, sometimes with the, the virtual stuff. But for especially what we're doing here, when you're doing something physical, you need some hands-on instruction okay when you're getting trained um especially initially <clears throat> and i'll tell you i i've had an interesting phenomenon happen over the years i have people come and take my class pretty regularly the hang and carry permit class i'm talking about and when they leave they will just gush over how good the class is which is is great you know for me they're just like this is the best gun class ever uh you know you did such an amazing job and all that stuff and like i said i love i love hearing that but the thing is um when I ask them, press them a little bit, I find out, well, my class is the only class they've ever had. So, <laughs> you know, that's not really much to go off of. So, um, I think I do a pretty good job in the classes and stuff, but if you haven't taken anything from another instructor, or especially a higher level instructor than what I teach at, um, then you really, you know, you really don't have anything to, to base that off of. And, and it would behoove you to, to get more training, either through me or through other people, particularly if you could swing getting some of the bigger classes. And in future videos, I'm going to talk more uh, in depth on where you can go to get training, what you're looking at money-wise and, and uh, equipment-wise and stuff like that. Also going to be talking more about uh, competitions and uh, stuff like that in, in future videos. But... Today's video, we're just really going to talk about the, the differences between training, practice, and competition. Um, like I said, training is just when you go to see somebody and they tell you how to do a skill, they show you how to do a skill, and then they watch you to see if you're developing that skill properly, if you can apply that skill like you're wanting to, and just give you some good feedback that way. For practice you go do the skills by yourself okay you learn the skills in a class now you have some level of that well you're not going to get um full value of that just by taking that one training class you need to practice your skills it takes thousands of repetitions for you to burn a skill into your toolbox okay um and unfortunately you know, you'll hear people say, uh, you know, practice makes perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. Okay. If you haven't got the training and you're practicing something that's wrong, you can wind up burning bad skills into your toolbox. Okay. So you need to have good training before you start practicing. Okay. Um, what about competitions? How, how practicing for competitions, using competitions as practice, they can get kind of blendy here. What I mean, if you're going to do a competition, obviously you want to practice for the competition. I'm going to use something like IDPA, uh, and I'm like I said, I've got other videos. I'm going to be telling you guys deeper about all these competitions, but I'll, I'll briefly explain. IDPA is International Defensive Pistol Association. That is a competition where people... Um, practice shooting in a defensive style okay you would show up with a pistol in a holster magazines uh, some type of a garment covering your gun and you would be presented with scenarios that uh, try to somewhat mimic something you might run into in real life and then you have to solve that on the clock okay so they'll tell you here's the scenario you do this and they'll hit a buzzer and then you have to do it so that would be a competition. Well, naturally, you would go practice for a competition like that. And so you would know going into your your um, competition what the rules are, what kind of scenarios you could be expected to um, deal with. And so then you would practice skills that would help you 
in that competition. Definitely you're going to need to be able to draw the gun, okay? So you need to practice drawing your gun. You need to practice drawing your gun from concealment. Getting the gun out of the holster safely, not grabbing a hold of your concealment garment as you're drawing and winding up throwing your gun, uh, stuff like that you're going to need to practice. Your reloads, those are your two big ones for that. Drawing, reloads, correcting malfunctions uh, would be next on that. Uh, moving with your finger off the trigger. Anytime you're moving from uh, one location to another, you need to have your finger off the trigger. Stuff like that is, is what you would need to practice. But in, in your home, you can do hours of dry fire practice, drawing the gun out of the holster and reholster, drawing the gun out of the holster and reholster, doing that and practicing your reloads, okay? Dropping a magazine, putting another magazine in. Dropping a magazine, putting another magazine in. And get to where that stuff is smooth. And you'll hear this one. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Um, in competitions, most of them, part of your score, or a large part of your score, is based on your speed. All right? You want to be as fast as possible, but you can't start out fast. Okay, you have to start out smooth. All right, you have to practice these movements until they are smooth and then you can build the speed into it, okay? Um, so you're gonna to wanna to practice that for your competitions. But there are ways you can use competitions as practice for something else. One, you can use lower level competitions as practice for a higher level competition, say the IDPA, for example. You can just shoot IDPA, IDPA on the local level. And local level IDPA, like around here, they shoot several of the cities around where we live, um, would be equivalent to something like church league softball. All right. Um, those are good matches for you to go to practice if you want to go shoot a national level, a state level or a national level, or even a, an international level match. You know, you need to practice shooting some of the local lower level matches. <laughs> But you can use um, some of these competitions as practice for the street. I have people pretty regularly, they, will, they won't go shoot some of these competitions because they, they don't feel practiced enough to go shoot in a competition and they don't want to embarrass themselves. Okay, so they're like, well, I can't, you know, I don't have enough time to go practice with my defensive handgun, so I'm not going to go shoot at a competition because I'm going to look stupid. I'm like, okay but you're gonna carry that gun on the street, right? Okay, you feel comfortable walking around at Walmart with a gun in a holster, and you think that you're gonna be able to present that gun in a deadly force encounter and be effective with it with no practice. You don't feel comfortable enough to go down and shoot a competition with a bunch of other friendly people who are of the same mindset and you're just worried about losing in front of these people and embarrassing yourself in front of these people, you're not worried about accidentally shooting another person at Walmart or you wind up dying because your skills were lacking. Not a good plan, all right? Yeah, it would be great if you could get to the range and practice for IDPA. And it would be great if you can do the standing, which right now we've got time, okay? Get your dry fire area and do your drawing practice, do your drawing practice, do your reload practices. No ammo in the room. It would be great if you were doing that. But if you're not, at least go shoot an IDPA match. All right. Who cares if you lose? All right. It's giving you practice for carrying that and doing that on the street. Um, now, do know that everything in competition is not directly analogous to something that you might want to use on the street. Uh, in the competitions, they get kind of gamey, all right, in that you you know everything that's going to happen in the, the scenario, and you have a t a, an opportunity typically to do what they call ghost in the stage, which is you can beforehand sit and think, well, I would go through it this way because I can see that, that target over there first and then I can shoot this guy and then I can shoot that guy and I gotta make sure I don't hit this guy and you get a chance to run it all through your head before you do it. Well, you're not gonna get to do that on the street. Right? You're just gonna have to deal with the situation. So you can do kind of a like a blended approach. I mean, you don't wanna go in there and just completely suck it up if you, if you don't have to, but you want to kind of uh, 
try to make the competition valuable to you in the street sense if if that's something you're interested if you're interested in carrying the gun for self-defense you want to use the competition to gain some skill level that you might need on the street so using cover right? not you know something that's going to stop bullets from coming in your direction stop people from seeing you concealment um things like that you you don't want to just the, the way people run through a stage in an IDPA match would get you killed on the streets. You don't just blaze and jump in front of doors and, and just run through things. You have to be a little bit more cautious. And you don't have to do, you know, the whole creeping thing that you would if you were really on the street, but you do need to slow down and, and try to think in a defensive mindset if, if that's what you're using the competition for. Now, granted, if you're just using this to blaze away and do a competition, do the best you can, all right? But... If you are wanting to use this competition as practice for you on the street, then do that. Don't worry about the score. Hell, even tell the guys, don't even write my score down. I paid my money to shoot the match. I don't care what my score is. I'm just here to make sure I'm safe, and I, I want to shoot through this and get some practice for on the street. Um, and they won't care. You know, they don't even care what your score is. Um, I do recommend you look at, at stuff that way. Uh, get the maximum value out of every minute you put into this. Okay, all of your training. When you go take another class, all right, you guys have, have studied under me for a while now. I've told you guys some, certain things. If you go take a class from somebody else, he may tell you something completely different or tell you something that is uh, opposite of what I've told you. In that class... Do what that instructor says, all right? When you leave that class, now you have two different tools. You can decide, do I want to use this tool? Do I want to use that tool? Was, did this make more sense? Is that total BS, all right? Or is there some blend between the two that really works better for you? You're going to have to put logic into that for yourself and, and find out what's going to work for you. So, you know, don't go to another class and say, well, Mr. Henley says blah, 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 because no instructor wants to hear that okay i'm teaching i'm teaching what i'm teaching and you know I, I may want to apply that in the future but you know in this class right here that's you know we're, we're not really able to, to deal with that right now um we're teaching this thing that that could be a, a completely different thing okay that we wind up getting into places where we know just enough to know um enough to get ourselves in trouble you know we 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 haven't practiced all of this stuff enough to see all the different facets of it so we can wind up throwing stuff in there in, in places they don't belong so um try to get yourself some training once this is all over um, holler at me i do training um uh, do practice what you've trained and don't be afraid to go shoot some competitions competitions are fun and they are also a, a vehicle for you guys to use as another method of practicing as well stay safe guys